Lockheed Martin just unveiled what promises to be the most advanced fighter drone ever built. Dubbed Vectus, this collaborative combat aircraft, as the Air Force knows them, is said to integrate 5th and 6th generation stealth fighter technology into a single low observable combat drone as either a standalone system or as a part of an integrated network in support of crewed fighters or bombers or other assets. In other words, it aims to be a loyal wingman drone that is so advanced and capable that it doesn't need to serve as a wingman at all, and can instead execute assigned missions with minimal oversight, leveraging its advanced sensor suite, which looks awfully similar to the F-35's electro-optical targeting system in this footage released by Lockheed, and extreme low observability to provide functionality that might be more akin to today's fifth-generation fighters than to the lower-cost CCA drones that are currently in testing to fly alongside them. And that is by design. Lockheed sees their Vectus drone as the high-end portion of an autonomous aircraft mix, which would see the battle space flooded with platforms ranging from Lockheed's own sensor-packed and inexpensive common multi-mission trucks, or Comets, which are effectively single-use cruise missiles that could carry sensors or electronic warfare capabilities instead, then to larger, more capable mid-range platforms like the General Atomics YFQ-42 and Andrel's YFQ-44 already in flight testing, and finally to high-end or exquisite drone platforms like the Vectus and maybe Northrop Grumman's RQ-180 high-altitude ISR aircraft. And speaking of the YFQ-42 and 44, Lockheed actually did compete for that first tranche of CCA contracts awarded by the Air Force, but ultimately lost to General Atomics and Anduril because their proposal was deemed too gold-plated, which is a common aerospace term for being too high-end for what the branch was looking for in its first batch of CCAs headed for service. Now, since then, Lockheed's John Clark has acknowledged that their CCA proposal was much stealthier and had much more advanced autonomy than the Air Force was looking for in its Tranche 1 CCA platforms, making it more expensive than the other offerings. It seems likely, then, that Vectus builds off of that gold-plated CCA design. Now, the first tranche of CCA drones in testing are air-to-air -air focused platforms, each said to be capable of carrying their own pair of AIM-120 AMRAAM air-to-air missiles. Lockheed's Vectus design, on the other hand, is said to be a truly multi-role fighter platform, capable of offensive and defensive counter-air, intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance operations, and air-to-ground combat operations. The specifics of Vectus are, however, pretty tough to come by. Skunk Works president O.J. Sanchez described it as a Group 5 uncrewed aerial system, the largest category of drones and remotely piloted aircraft that includes pretty much all uncrewed platforms that weigh more than 1,320 pounds and operate at altitudes above 18,000 feet. Sanchez did, however, state that this Vectus drone is smaller than an F-16 Fighting Falcon. Now, the Vectus itself carries a stealthy Lambda Delta wing and a dorsal-mounted air intake with an S-duct behind it and exhaust shrouding near the back, as shown in a brief cutaway in Lockheed's video. And this all points toward taking significant pains to reduce both radar and infrared detectability, while that dorsal-mounted intake might also suggest a high operating altitude, or service ceiling, with most adversary fighters and, of course, surface-based air defenses broadcasting their radar from well below, where the intake wouldn't have much impact on the fighter's radar return. But maybe the most important thing to relay about this new stealth drone is is that, as far as Lockheed is saying, it doesn't really exist yet, or at least not in the physical world. This jet has already seen a fair bit of testing in a digital environment, including cooperative operations with simulated F-22s and F-35s. But Lockheed doesn't expect it to take to the real skies for another two years or so. So as more information surfaces about Vectus, you can rest assured I'll be digging into it. 
Hey guys, two quick save rounds before I go. The first is that there's obviously tons of history and context that all led Lockheed Martin to this new Vectis drone program, and I'd love to dive into all that for an episode of Air Power if you're interested, because I wouldn't be able to give you a ton of new information about the drone itself. We can only really work with what's been released, but I could dive into the program's funneling technology toward it and the historical efforts that ultimately led to it. And if you're interested, I'll get to work right away. So just let me know in the comments below. And the second thing is that we are so close to reaching our goal of a half a million subscribers before the end of this month. And I really appreciate everyone who's helped us get this far. If you haven't subscribed yet and you are so inclined, it would mean a ton to me and my whole team if you could click subscribe down below. It's not a big deal for you, but it is a huge deal for us. Either way, thanks for watching.